buffers. This fucking buffering shit. Oh, I gotta stop cursing. <clears throat> hey, everybody here on Facebook Live. It's yours truly, Mike Marino, with another edition of Live from My Mother's Basement. Hope everybody's in a great mood. We're in a great mood, and we're gonna have a lot of fun tonight. And the first thing we're gonna tell you is that me and my guests have been tested for COVID-19, and once again, we're negative. So we're gonna take these masks off so that I can breathe. Oh, that's that a lot good? of crap. It does feel good. And he knows a lot about breathing, health, wellness, fitness. Because tonight on my show, I have the legendary Dr. Andy Rosenfarb. Say hello to my friend hello, right friends. now. Hi, friends. We're going to have a lot of fun with the doctor on the show. Usually I have funny people, singers, people in the entertainment business. But tonight I have a doctor. And we're wearing his shirt, AccuVision Acupuncture. And we're really going to get into this whole acupuncture and getting healthy, uh, let's say, narrative while I start eating some food that we call gobble ghoul. So anyway, uh, I'm glad you can uh, make it down into the basement. I really appreciate you coming over. And thank you, everybody, for writing in the show. We're going to take all kinds of great questions and get a lot of answers from, from Andy. So just relax just a little bit. See how many people write into the show just that fast. Hi, Karen. Hey doing hi james how are you and away we go let's have some fun i was watching the news tonight before i have my guests come over and that's what i like to start with what's going on in the world and we'll ask my guests what they think about it too everybody knows that the uh, governor of the state of new york is in the hot seat now never saw that coming handsome guy like mr cuomo nice italian fella so i'm a little on the hair. on the, he's got hair Notice yeah. he looked at my hairline. We said that. Remember that's hair? that's. Not, I remember hair. I remember. You remember hair? I remember hair. You wear this well, though. You see, I'm not ready to shave my head. No. I'm still holding out for the comb over. <laughs> comb this, over. Maybe if I get uh, acupuncture in the head, my hair will grow back. You could rock that. You could rock that. Well, you know what I was thinking? That there are some people who do that whole hair transplant thing, and they rip it out of the back of your head and stick it in the front. I was told that I would be a good candidate. It's like a doll hair, though, right? Well, I don't know if I would look like a doll. No, I don't know. Some of these guys look pretty good. Well, they got the stem cell injections now. Right. They're taking stem cells. They take your plasma, and they spin it, and they extract your plasma and inject in your head your stem cells, and it supposedly grows hair. Are you serious? Are you kidding me? No. I'm serious. Really? I haven't tried it. See, now I'm thinking about a whole different subject matter. Now I'm thinking about getting some stem cells so I can get a hairline so I can get some girls, like Cuomo. Mm. See how we made this all come full circle? You gotta love that. Um, what do you think about this thing? They're bringing him up on supposed charges of doing uh, inappropriate conversations or inappropriate uh, whatever it is that they call it. Now, quite honestly, I mean, I don't know when you grew up, but back in my day, you know, guys, Italian guys, kiss a girl on both sides of the cheek when you say hello this is the most recent thing someone's complaining that she was kissed on both sides of the cheek from the governor really and that's inappropriate she better never go to Italy because I'm pretty sure that everybody in Italy kisses each other on both sides of the cheek including men kissing each other and that's offensive well I don't know if it's offensive I think it's uh I mean, if he grabs you on the mouth and starts slipping you the tongue, that would be a little offensive. I'd be a little uncomfortable. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. It's... So I don't know. I uh, I think if they're going to get this guy and try to get him out of office, they got to get him out of office for something a little bit more substantial, like the way he's running the whole COVID thing. So you're a doctor. Now, what do you feel about this way he's running COVID safety protocol when it comes to the um retirement community that's pretty much what they're going to go get him on yeah they're definitely looking at that um i think that he probably did what he thought was right he probably has a lot of advisors that told him what to do i know that in this day and age that safety is always more important most important for everybody um i think that there may have been some way there's some discussions the way he handled it they put people in nursing homes too early they could have died as a result of that. Um, I don't know if it was all his fault. You know, he's probably got advisors, maybe he made some bad decisions, but 
you know, I don't think it's all on him. I'm thinking the same thing too. He, who is he to make every single decision? I would assume he's got a team of people that say, hey, I wouldn't do that if I were you, or maybe we should do this, or you know what, I'm a scientist, I should, I would advise you do things this way. Right. Besides, uh, <clears throat> I would say uh, everybody in the world has never experienced a pandemic. Right. Is there anybody alive that said, well, I'll never forget the pandemic when it happened 100 years ago? How the hell you know? What were you, three? Because there's not really that many people who are 121. Yeah. Yeah. How long ago was the other pandemic? Did we say 1918 or something like yeah, that? Yeah, Spanish flu. The Spanish flu. Yeah. Was it 1918? Something like that. Yeah, 18. In the last for a year and a half. Year, year and a half. Mm, right, so we're right around that time. Home. Yep. But what exactly did they do? I don't remember the history on that. I just remember there was one. And they didn't have social media, so there wasn't fantastic shows like this. <laughs> and, they, and they didn't have acupuncture, or did they? Oh, they had acupuncture. It was mostly in China back then. Really? Yep, yep. Uh, it was just in the, uh, in the United States. It was pretty much limited to probably San Francisco, New York, where Chinatowns were. Right. Holy smokes, he really knows his stuff. Well, let me get on that. I can't wait to talk about this stuff. <laughs> Let's find some funny stuff real first, and then we're going to go right into this whole acupuncture. I want to say acupressure all the time. I don't know why. What makes me want to say acupressure? You're telling her, I like to put pressure on me. Yeah. Pressure. Everybody, him and Jim Check, you always want to grab my thing over here. <laughs> it's really bad. So I got a bad problem over here. It lets you know that I... Uh, this whole thing out so let's see who else is watching the show we're gonna eat today we got some oh, gifts yeah. we got some candy we got some cakes and we got some fun i'm gonna teach everybody how to get healthy hi everybody how you doing thank you so much for joining the show we couldn't do the show tomorrow night which is when i normally do it because tomorrow i'm actually going on tour that's right i'm going down to the war zone of florida i'm gonna go to naples i'm gonna go to a boca raton i'm gonna go to delray beach i'm gonna go to port st Lucie because yours truly is going back on comedy tour so speaking of something funny i told you before i wanted to talk about this there's a ship <laughs> come on man this has got to be so funny good. there's a ship that was going through some kind of canal in england i think it was egypt. england right egypt oh shit the canal of egypt well, look, somebody even said 1918 was the pandemic. We said that. My that aunt right. lost all her hair in the pandemic of 1918. She looked like us. That's why I lost my hair. I'm in the pandemic. 18. We're in recovery. <laughs> yeah, I've been recovering for 100 years. Um, we look good now. The, we do look good. In. Well, you look great. I'm fat. <laughs> um, we're going to get even fatter Big because, bones. look, we didn't even start the show and somebody's yelling at number four. <laughs> you see that? Hi, Lynn Marie. Yes, we are going to have the number four. We're going to have cake, too. This is hilarious. <laughs> this show's known for a fucking sandwich. <laughs> What's that show known for? Oh, oh positivity. Sandwich, yeah. What's that show known for? Oh, great news. How about the Mike Marino show? Sandwiches. <laughs> Where to get the sandwich? We can't even stay on a topic. What the hell were we talking about? The ship. Oh, the ship. The ship. Egypt. Is it really Egypt? It's Egypt. He, he pays to watch the news closer than I do. I thought it was in England because the guy who was talking about it was sounded like he was from England. There's a ship. It's called the Ever Given. Right? I think the so. Ever Given. I think so. But I think the ship line is Evergreen. So this ship was called the Ever Given. And it was going through this canal and it got stuck. And they said the wind twisted it. I a huge cargo ship. Yeah, it's a huge cargo ship with tons of COVID-19 vaccines. <laughs> no. That's why nobody's getting them. That's why you can't get it. <laughs> They're all in Egypt. Everything's in Egypt. It got stuck. It was coming from, uh, I don't they know. They got confused. They thought it was the West Nile virus. Yeah, yeah. They got the wrong one. They were coming over here to kill the bugs. The cicadas. <laughs> the cicadas are coming this year after 17 years of sleeping. That's true. I <laughs> they, they, yeah, yeah. The cicada, the ugliest bug in the world. So this ship decides to get stuck, hits the ground. The, the tide goes out and uh, 370 ships waiting for it to get out of the way. So I want to know what is the conversations like on all the different ships? 
Think about it. There's got to be one ship, and the ship's captain's got the binoculars. Binoculars. Is it binocular? Binocular. Binoculars. And he's looking at it going, oh, would you look at this piece of shit? <laughs> I told him not to go through at low tide. Everybody's hating on him. I'm never going to get these cows off my ship. Because there's cattle. cows. Cattle. They said there was cattle, food, cheese. Could you imagine oh, being this? going bad. <laughs> Could you imagine being the ship that got the cheese? Oh. Oh. Anthony. <laughs> what Go are we get gonna... the cheese. Make Some... a sandwich. I can't keep eating this cheese. I got a gastrointestinal <laughs> intestinal problem. But there's probably a, a bunch of people going, look at this asshole. I knew him back in boating school. I knew then he shouldn't be the captain of a ship. He's probably going to end up becoming a hair transplant doctor. Oh. His career's over. His career is over. And then you had to think about how would six days? Is it six days it stuck? Yeah, yeah. But they were expecting six it to, days. They were expecting it to be longer. I actually uh, got set free today. They got yeah. what, like twenty tugboats? Over yeah, there? I heard they're taking the the, the, the thing off. The t- I the love cargo. being from New Jersey because we don't know how to <laughs> say certain things. So everything is a thing. They took the <laughs> thing, thing and put the it thing. over there. Yeah, but they the took thing. the thing and took the thing off with the thing. What was that? You know, it was one of those things. <laughs> and then. <laughs> The cranes talk. dug from the thing. They were like digging out that. this ship, but this ain't no ordinary ship. This ship is the size of the Statue of Liberty. No. Empire State Building. April, uh, Empire State Building. It's a big ship. Yeah. <laughs> and you can't move. So could you imagine being the captain? No. Let's pretend I'm yeah. the captain. You're the okay. co-captain. We're driving down the ocean. I never really do this on the show, but it's we're going to do a little improv now. Right. And I'm the captain. Yeah. You're the co-captain. Oh, uh, I think we hit something. What did we hit, sir? Oh, wait a minute. If you're going to have an accent, I want an accent. All right. where, where were they? In Egypt? How do you do an Egypt accent? No, I'll be from New Jersey. You could be from somewhere else. We could go with else. the Jerky Boys, the Egyptian magician. Remember, <laughs> remember that shit? Yeah. yeah. We could do that anymore. Yeah, like, now we got cancel culture. No, no Jerky Boys. <laughs> um. Now, you're in the engine room. I'm in the captain in the front. Okay. Engine room. Uh, yes, sir. What the fuck was that noise? Uh, <laughs> something grinded. I'm not sure. We're looking into it. Well, look closer because we ain't moving. Uh, uh, I, we can't see. Uh, uh, I, 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 we just have a lot of cheese. The I, cheese is moving. Who cut that cheese? It stinks up here. <laughs> oh, God. It's got to be the cows. The cows and the cheese. We're in trouble, sir. It's starting to get hot. You realize we're in Egypt. How stuck exactly are we? Well, sir, we're not moving. How many days do you think we'll be stuck in this fucking mud? (laughs) Oh, not more than six days. My back hurts. Do you know a guy who does acupressure? No, but I heard acupuncture could work. I set you up. <laughs> I set you up. <laughs> could yeah. you imagine the real oh. the real ship's captain though? You remember a long time ago there was a cruise ship and he wanted to go close to the island to wave to some girl and he ran aground. Yep. He was Italian too, he was in Italy. Could you imagine him? I don't know what happened. He's checking out a girl. <laughs> I hit an iceberg. Uh, it's summertime. Yeah, well, it came out of nowhere. <laughs> oh my god. But I mean that's just hilarious there's a lot of crazy things going on in this world at least we can get a laugh out of that because that's got to be first class embarrassing oh my god Imagine so you're sitting there for six days it, the, all the every news station in the world is like they interviewed this guy yet no no they didn't have the captain on the television Maybe get him on the show yeah i would love to get him on the show <laughs> could you imagine my questions oh, no no <laughs> I mean, were you smoking some weed or something? Yeah. Were you stoned? Was there a girl on the ship? Did you try to kiss a girl on both sides of the cheek and you got slapped or some shit like that? Possible. What were you doing that in made Egypt, you... In Egypt, they got consequences there, too. Are we really in Egypt? Why did they got to go through such a small canal? Did you see how small it is? I didn't. I just saw a couple pictures of the twisted ship. And Speaking of canal, what is the canal that real cruise ships do go through when they go on vacation? Panama Canal? Panama Canal. I don't know why I wanted to talk about the Panama Canal because I wanted to do a shout out to the veterans today, but I think it has nothing to do with the Panama Canal. 
you can link it up somehow. I'm, I'm always watching movies. Panama Canal, there was a war movie about that. Today is National Veteran War uh, Vets Day. It is. If I said that right. And it was all over the news, and they were showing different clips and different uh, videos and different black and white pictures of the Vietnam War, which is really pretty horrible, quite honestly, when you think about it. And then the controversy over whether they should have been there or they shouldn't have been there. But, uh, of course, there's still Vietnam vets who have, what is it? What is the initials? PSD? The initials for what they have. Got me on that one. Well, anyway, so happy National Around the World Veterans Day. If you're a veteran, I hope you're watching the show. And if you want, right into the show. Maybe we can get some gifts that would make you, you happy, like some T-shirts. Or um, maybe we get you a, a visit to come and see Dr. Andy. And get yourself some acupressure. Or puncture. Oh, there it is. PTSD. Thank you PTSD. so much, Kat. I was never good with acronyms. And now there's acronyms on everything, right? There used to be a DVD. We knew what that was. Now you got LOL. Who came up with LOL? Are you that lazy you can't say laugh out loud that you have to say LOL? And then there's many different acronyms that I just don't get. LMAO. Yeah. <laughs> I keep going. My kids use that. them all the time. Yeah. They don't even say laugh kids. out loud. My kid goes, hi, LOL. Yeah. Kids today, they really got it made because when I was a kid, if I said LOL, somebody would crack me in the head and I wouldn't have laughed out loud. I'd have cried out loud. <laughs> Maybe that could be an acronym. What would that be? C-O-L. C-O-L. I was going to say K-O-L. <laughs> Post-traumatic stress disorder. All right. Oh, thank PTSD, you, Gina. Yeah. I appreciate that. Look, everybody got to correct me. We're trying to be funny on a serious subject matter. So why don't we go into a serious subject matter right now, okay? I'm sitting here with a doctor. Look at everybody. See, they're writing the acronyms now. Yeah. They're being spiteful. <laughs> spiteful. Show us what you got. L-M-F-A-O. What is the acronym that girls call each other? My bestie, my, my BFF. BFF. Yeah, best fucking friend. I get that one. <laughs> Laugh my fucking ass off. That's what that means. Okay, good. And they told me not to curse on my show, but I can't figure out the acronym. Hey, Pammy Pam, how you doing? Thanks for joining me. <laughs> um, this is Dr. Andy Rosenfarb. And tell us about what, it, what look at everybody keeps on writing. They got to write the whole it's thing now. Good. It's never going to stop. <laughs> LOL, lots of love. That's what that means. What's LOS? Lots of sex. Not tonight. Um, how long have you been a doctor? Where'd you go to school? Uh, went to acupuncture school initially in San Diego, a school called Pacific College of Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine. Uh, that was in... So you were serious when you said that the Orient is where acupuncture comes from? Yeah. Yeah. China. China. China originated in China. And Can uh, we say China without getting yelled at? Yeah. Acupuncture comes from China. Acupressure comes from Jersey City, New Jersey. Okay, so acupuncture. Ow, right Dush. there in the in the thing where I don't have sex. <laughs> Dush. Dush. That's how we do it when you acupuncture in Jersey. Acupressure. You pressure. You Dush. Let's Dush. go. Let's go really far back. You graduate high school. Yeah. Where, where'd you go to high school? Uh, Livingston High School. All right. So you're a Jersey boy. You go out to San Diego. You study acupuncture. Mm -hmm. How'd you know you wanted to be an acupuncturist? Is that what it is? Acupuncturist, yep. Is it a doctor? Because we always have fun with the difference between a chiropractor is not a doctor, but he says that he is. Like a dentist says he's not a doctor either. He's a doctor of dentistry. Correct. Okay, so. Like a real doctor. That's what my patients say all the time. So I went to my real doctor. Like I'm the make-believe doctor. All right, so that so, that now, so that's like somebody saying to me, you're a comedian, so what's your real job? Yeah, like make-believe comedian. Yeah, I'm. I, this is all make-believe. Well, like, I ain't even here. There's doctor and there's Dr. Light. So we're right. like Dr. Light, like Bud, Bud Light. We're like Dr. Light. All right. So he's Dr. Light. He goes to San Diego, studies acupressure. Acupuncture. Acupuncture. Yeah. Um, I can't even get it right when I want to get it right. It's unbelievable. No, it was pre-med. And uh, my father actually went for acupuncture for high blood pressure. So while I was, in I was studying for my MCATs and uh, I started reading about acupuncture, learning about it. And I just, I was really interested. It really just fascinated me, the philosophy, the theory. Uh, I went for acupuncture um, when I was home on a break just to try it out. Uh, met the guy, and I, really, I just fell in love with the, the whole idea of it and the philosophy behind it. So the next question was, are there schools for this? Can you make a living doing this? 
and uh, found a school in San Diego and uh, came back 25 years later, still practicing, set up a shop 21 years ago in Westfield and have been there ever since. So you're really not practicing. You actually are a doctor of acupuncture. Correct. And what's the difference between acupuncture and the chiropractic world? Because I met you through our friend who is a chiropractor, uh, Jim. Dr. Dr. Jimmy. Jim. Dr. Jimmy. Yeah. So um, it's it's similar. Big Jim. He's the one who says I got a problem because it's in, in the thing over here. <laughs> and why is that? I'm not going to say on my show, but Dr. Jim Checchio gives okay. me an adjustment. Boy, does he picks you up, he twists you, makes you look like a pretzel, and you feel fantastic when you're done. That it is leaves. a workout. It is yeah. a workout, isn't it? Yeah, I'm exhausted. I got a nap when he's done adjusting me. So um, we're going to take a lot of questions, and he's going to give a lot of answers. So, Kat, keep on watching. We're going to tell you exactly where you can go in Westfield and get yourself some acupuncture. Puncture. Puncture, puncture needles. Puncture. Pressure massage. So you're studying this art form of curing people, but mm -hmm. you don't do chiropractor sessions. You don't, you're not a chiropractor. No. Chiropractic is, um, it's similar in, in the outcomes. So chiropractic primarily deals with the joints, the spine, the spinal segment alignments, and it still has a holistic outcome to try to, you know, obviously deal with your back, but we're also trying to help uh, create balance in health in the body. Acupuncture tries to do the same thing using acupuncture needles. We also use Chinese herbs. We use massage. We tell people to eat better, how to breathe, uh, meditation techniques. So it's holistic. They're both holistic. All right, let's take this uh, call real quick because I guess so many people asking where you are. <laughs> where is your office? I have chronic pain. 332 South Avenue, East Westfield. That's Gina Marie Lawrence Rosenfarb. Oh, who is that? That's the mama. Oh, hi, Ma. How are you? Thanks for watching. Is acupuncture covered by medical insurance? Hey, guys. <clears throat> uh, why don't you go ahead and say where your, uh, your, uh, your office is? Uh, 332 South Avenue, East in Westfield. It's our clinic. Right. And what is the website? Uh, AccuVisionAcupuncture.com. All right, let's take some questions right now because so many people are just reaching out to you right now while we're trying to have some fun, and then we're going to go to a, a little lunch break. Oh, lunch. So, um, if anybody has a question for the doctor right now, go ahead and ask it mostly on Facebook if you don't mind because I can't see all the way up on Instagram. Bam, where's the food? <laughs> it's coming, it's coming. I have a funny <laughs> feeling I can't keep them from talking. But anyhow, he also cures people of the eyes. This is why it's called AccuVision, which I'm really interested in too, because now at my age, I'm wearing my reading glasses way too much, especially since I'm on the internet all the time and I do my show like this and I can't see a thing unless I have the reading glasses on. I can't even see as far as where the Instagram camera is right now. And I wanted to see if maybe I should get LASIK I went to a great eye doctor at a famous doctor place called um, Walmart. And when I went there, take your time, everybody. It's fucking funny as shit. I went there. They gave me a prescription. And then I went to the prescription place that does eyewear and eye checkups with the American something, something. It's the owl. And you get two pairs of glasses and a free eye exam for $75. Well, that's not how it goes. I went in there. They said, you need trifocals. And by the time I walked out of there, it was $300 just for one pair of glasses. Ooh. And I was really pissed off because they didn't do what they said they were going to do. It's a ripoff Your joint. bait and switch? Yes. yes. So now tell us how you can help people with eyes through acupuncture, because I'd hate to think you actually put those little needles around somebody's eyes. It's the first question we get. Do the needles go in the eyes? They don't. That's most people ask. So, uh, yes, so we created a uh, specialty uh, called ophthalmic acupuncture, AccuVision, and we help people with vision issues, glaucoma, macular degeneration, eye strokes, uh, age-related vision issues, and uh, it works because a lot of these conditions there's no conventional treatment for. So, Well, how do you do it then? I mean, let's suppose and I'm, I want to get cured from having this mm -hmm. uh, well, eyeglass problem that I have reading. <clears throat> Where do you put these um, needles? So the pins go usually around the forehead, 
hands, feet. The idea is to help relax the muscles around their eyes. Our eyes actually have six muscles that help move them and innervate them. So when those muscles get tight, the eyes actually uh, don't work as well. Like most of you know, like your joints, you start to get older, muscles get tight. Yeah, every morning I'm stiff and stiff. That's right. why I got to call Dr. Jim, the chiropractor. Same thing happens with your eyes. All the muscles get tight. So what the acupuncture does is it relaxes the muscles around the eyes, helps increase the blood flow to the eyes so they function better. So do you actually have somebody come in there who has an eye problem and then how long does it take? And he turns to you and says, you won't believe this, but I could see so much better or my reading glasses are better or I don't need my reading glasses. Every week. So we, really? do, we do vision testing before patients start. We take them through about a series of 20 treatments then we retest. Average patients read two to five lines better. See, I need to go get some acupuncture around my eyes because I'm really, I'm getting headaches. Um, I, I, I don't take it off. Like, you know, you put your reading yeah. glasses on to read something, but I don't take it off. I keep them on and then I look up and then I'm driving with my reading glasses. It's the wrong prescription. I'm, it's the wrong prescription. I'm starting to get Strain headaches. in your eyes. Right. And I couldn't get used to the uh, progressives. Yeah. I got a pair of the progressives, the ones up. that were $300, and I put it on, and I'm looking up, I'm looking down, I'm looking up and looking down, and I'm like, I'm going to get in a car accident. It's just not <laughs> working really, properly. You know, yeah. Trying to see it at the bottom, towards that. Progressive eyeglasses are a glass that looks normal, um, but they basically cut out the lines, so it's not really a buyer trifocal. You have to train your body to kind of look up or look down at yes. different parts of the glass. It wasn't working. Yeah. It's difficult for a lot of people. I went to see Dr. Jim to have a, uh, a nice complimentary session of acupuncture. And he came back in the room and he was taking pictures of me because he knew I was petrified. <clears throat> I mean, I've never been there before. And you got to tell him, listen, I'm going to lay on this table and you're going to stick a bunch of needles in me and I'm going to be OK with that. No, that was kind of scary. But the needles really don't hurt, but they do pinch you. I think if there's a such term as psychosomatic, is it? I convinced myself it hurt because I was scared. I went in the room. Tensed up. Nice, I tensed up. You're tensed up. You saw it? Apprehensive. I, oh, you knew no, I did? Yeah, yeah. You stopped breathing a little bit. I stopped breathing. I was holding my breath. Ow! He's, he's poking me in the toe. Yeah. Uh, almost looked like rigor mortis. Yeah. I was petrified. A little, a little nervous. It's good. Most people are, though. You take, off, you take off your shoes and socks. At least that's what I did. And I had 17 needles. I remember the number. 17, 17 needles. He put one right in my forehead. He put a bunch in my feet and uh, in my arms, right? Yep. And I laid there for 30 minutes. Is that 30 minutes? Yeah, 30 minutes. I slept. I was out in seconds at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, which I normally would not have fell asleep. But I was so relaxed. And he puts this red light on your feet, which makes your feet warm where all the needles are. Felt fantastic. When I woke up, I'm like, well, I feel great. And I don't feel where the needles were. However, when you were taking the needles out, I kept, I was squeamish. I'm like, am I going to be bleeding? Did I get stabbed? Could you imagine an Italian acupuncturist, which is using like an ice pick? Yeah. But anyway, I Cali really function. felt great. And I want to go back and I want to keep on getting some treatments to make myself feel better because I'm in my 50s. I do experience aches and pains. I feel great when I go see the chiropractor, especially when I have a headache. He snaps my head and that feels that feels great. But I do want to have something done about my eyes. Yeah. So if anybody out there, look, progressives are hard to get used to. Get contacts. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, here's the thing with the contacts. If you have... When you get old, you start to get, you know, kind of this type of stuff. So now they'll give you one near and one far contact. It'll make you crazy. It's called monovision. Some people can handle it. A lot of people, not so much. But that's the strategy. If, you, if you're starting to get uh, called presbyopia, where you have to, you can't really read up close, you have to pull your hands out there. Uh, they'll give you one contact lens for distance and one up close. So you're like. Yeah, I would drive me. It'd be like being drunk. Yeah. yeah. Here comes a nice question from our friend Dixie. I had back surgery to fuse my spine from scoliosis. Mm. From C3 to L4, can I still Whoa. get an adjustment on my back? Maybe that's yeah. a question for Jim. I don't that's know. That's a question for Jim, but 
I would probably say no. Acupuncture might help, but you can't. Those if she's got metal rods in the back or fused discs or fused vertebrae. Is that what that means? Yeah, sounds like she may have fusion. Had back surgery to fuse my spine. Yeah. Hi, Dixie. Ask us some more questions, sweetheart. Well, I don't know if I could say sweetheart. Yoga would be really good for her. Yeah, you got to do, do yoga. yoga. Stretch out the back a little bit. Yeah, I do stretching. yoga when I have gas. It's Mobility unbelievable. And the sock. <laughs> There's nothing like good relief oh, so from release. some good yoga after you have a number four. <laughs> number four is good. The contacts didn't work for me. Yeah. Get acupuncture every week. So that means you do get the acupuncture. Pressure. Puncture. Acupuncture. I was right. So yeah, well, Dixie, I think, is in a different uh, state. Harrington Rid Insertion. What is that? Can you be more specific? Oh, it's a Harrington rod. You have a Harrington rod? Yep. Yeah, Too bad nice. Jim's not here. We could have asked him. He's not here. I have screws. Yeah. Yeah, she's all bolted up. How about sciatica? Sciatica. 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 It's a pain in the ass. That's what sciatica is. It goes down your leg. I had sciatica. Yeah. Sciatic, sciatica. Oh, that hurts sciatic like shit. Very, very easy. Okay, so does acupuncture work on yep. sciatica? Yep. We usually do a combination of chiropractic, acupuncture, and teach people mobility stretching. But okay. Yeah, it's the, the, the muscles tighten. They squeeze on the sciatic nerve. It comes out of your butt, so you get this horrible pain in your, butt in your leg. Oh, yeah. It's murder. Yeah. It's murder. But that's good for acupuncture. Acupuncture. Yep. All right. Will floaters be gone with MA48? Yep, microacupuncture. That's that's the system we use. Uh, floaters help a lot. Also, if you have floaters, use something called hyaluronic acid. It's a supplement you could take. Very good for getting rid of uh, floaters. What is a floater? You ever have floaters where you look at like a white wall and you kind of see these things going by? Oh, no, I never had that, you thank God. Wow. Thanks for asking that question, Dax Santos. And thank you very much, Dixie LaPierre. And thank you, Ingrid. Thank you, Karen. Uh, so far, I guess he's answering all these questions right on the money. So if you do have these floaters, you can get acupuncture as well. Pinched nerve. Yep, it's a pinched nerve. No, I think they're asking. Should, oh, yeah. Should you? Depends on where. Neck, back. Sciatic is a pinched nerve. Yeah. That's why it's I had you surgery. release the muscle. You release the muscle and uh, pain goes away. That's what acupuncture does. This person saying, I hate surgery. I've had it several times. Floaters bother me all the time. I'll come up next week. I'll go see your AccuVision guy. But he's sitting right here. Yeah. My flight benefits <clears throat> rock. <laughs> okay. Well, once again, go ahead and give your address. I think you just got yourself a patient. 332 South Avenue East, Westfield, New Jersey. Give us a call. Um can't help everybody, but if you give a call, then we can find out what's going on and decide if or how we might be able to help you. Well, definitely go to his website. And the website is acupuncturehealth.net. Is that correct? Yep. We have two websites, acupuncturehealth.net and AccuVision Acupuncture. AccuVision Acupuncture is more of our site for the eye conditions. Our general site is acupuncturehealth.net. Acupuncturehealth.net. Mm -hmm. So go on the site, take a look around, see if there's something that you want to do. How about ocular migraines? Yeah. Yep. Very, very treatable ocular migraines. Um, what is that? It's it's when you start to get a headache and you actually start to see an aura before it. And then it's a, it's a migraine, but you have visual kind of hallucinations. In oh, the no kidding. Yeah, yeah. Wow, could you imagine having a headache so bad you start getting illusions? It's bad. It's inflammation driven. And yeah, a lot of things can cause it, but we uh yeah, we have really good success with that. Imagine that. Imagine showing up at his office and saying, you know, my headache hurts so much, I think I'm a comedian. Could you help me? <laughs> can you cure this want to be funny? Delusions of grandeur. I, I, I keep thinking something big <laughs> is gonna happen. <laughs> How about the chambers? Yeah, okay. We got another half hour. There's nobody here, ladies and gentlemen. We're taking questions. We're answering the questions. See, in the comedy world, you get many directors. Oh, yeah. Yeah, everybody everybody knows what's funny and what's good. We want to talk about the other thing that's in the office over there on this great place where uh, he is in Westfield. So tell us about what I was calling the chamber. The chambers. 
Is it the chamber? It's the chamber. It the chamber. It's the chamber. Um, so it's hyperbaric oxygen therapy called HBOT or HBOT for short. Ah, another acronym. Another acronym. Hey, we're into acronyms. Today. Say it, Say the whole thing. Say the whole thing. Hyperbaric again. oxygen therapy, HBOT. Look, somebody just wrote in, I feel like I'm tripping when I have a headache. That is hilarious. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so the yeah. HBOT? Yeah. So HBOT is a, it's kind of getting a comeback. So hyperbaric oxygen is hyper increased, baric is pressure. So we're basically putting you in a blow up tent kind of, blow up chamber, as you like to call it. And what we do is we pressurize it. So we push it up, puts about 1.5 atmospheres of pressure. Roughly five to seven pounds per pressure, pa pounds per square inch of pressure. While you're breathing oxygen, what that does is it drives oxygen into the cells, into the tissues of the body. Now, as we age, we have trauma, um, injury, we reduce blood flow to areas and we get inflammation. The cells can't regenerate. That's why when you get hurt sometimes, it hurts forever because you don't get blood flow to the area. It doesn't heal right. So what hyperbaric oxygen does it drives oxygen into those parts of the body that need cellular respiration, meaning the cells need to breathe like us, and we take in air and exhale carbon dioxide. So not all cells of the body are able to do that when there's trauma, injury, illness, or disease. So hyperbaric oxygen increases the oxygen to those parts of the body that are unable to breathe. See, now I have a question that I know everybody's gonna ask, how? How does it go to the right part of the person's body? I'm glad you asked. All right. Then he's glad for that question because here it comes. Look, first of all, before we move on to that, um, here's some more questions. Let's see. What is the name of the supplement you use for floaters? Hyaluronic acid. H-Y-A-L-U-R-O-N-I-C. Hyaluronic acid. Got that? We have another person who's saying that they... They're soaking their back and putting on their glasses because they're in pain, but they're watching the show. Isn't that what Michael Jackson used to do? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Michael Jackson used to sleep in hyperbaric. Uh, a lot of pro athletes are using it now. Um, it's very, very popular. So what happens is our oxygen levels are dependent on our red blood cells that deliver oxygen throughout our body. So we can only get to 100% saturation of oxygen. When we use hyperbarics, we could actually create a surplus of oxygen. And the body, the oxygen will just go to the areas of the body that are deficient. It just knows to go to those body, the areas of the body that don't have oxygen and heal that area. So it's basically an osmotic or diffusion process where if the body has enough oxygen there, it's got enough. It's not going to go there. So it's going to migrate to areas. The gas is going to go to the areas to balance out the oxygen levels in the whole body. Well, that's unbelievable, man. I'm glad that you have that going on. There's a lot of people asking, again, where your business is because they want to go see you. Here's Gina Agulis. Do you have clients with chronic pain disorders like fibromyalgia who use the chamber? If so, does it help? And, of course, there's another question. Do you take health insurance? I'm going to schedule the eye appointment for next week with your AccuVision guy. He's sitting right here. <laughs> If he's got he's got my vote, you got so excited. Plus, number four is on the way home. Oh, that is hilarious! <laughs> Somebody's gonna go see you and go into, go see Johnny Salami while they're done. Um, doctor showed me the ancient needles. Yikes! Hold on a minute. Does insurance cover the hyperbaric chamber? Okay, so, so there's a lot of people asking yeah, about the insurance. Insurance does not cover hyperbaric right now. Um, it just doesn't. Insurance companies do not pick it up. With acupuncture, some insurances cover. So if people call, we'll run your insurance company. It's just a matter of if each individual policy, if you'll have different policies, some cover acupuncture, some don't. If you're covered, we bill. If it doesn't, you it come doesn't. up with a deal. <laughs> yeah, you make, you a, make deal. a deal. You make a deal. It's special. Why doesn't special. the insurance cover the, uh, the chamber? That's a fantastic question. I don't oh. work for an insurance company. Um, they just haven't got around to covering it yet. So do you There's, ever call an insurance company and say, Hey, listen, we're doing something that's so much better than what other people are doing. We don't prescribe medication. We don't, we don't give people, um, you know, over the counter drugs yeah. and stuff like that. So why not us? We talk to them all the time. I've had many conversations with insurance and they know the, the 
adjusters. We've talked to people very high up insurance and they're, they're like, we know you can do a $40,000 knee surgery or you can spend about 600 bucks for acupuncture, you know, cost difference. They, they know they just, they haven't, it's a slow process of implementation. What do you think? Well, I mean, I've known I <laughs> should been, be covered. I've had to go into different situations when I had some stomach problems years ago and there were some of the things that were holistic were not covered. But once you yeah. go to see a doctor who says, yeah, I'm going to take out a knife and take out your guts. Oh, we covered a hundred percent. I'm like, well, this guy's telling me if I drink this liquid, I would get rid of what's my problem in my stomach. So it's true. It's sad that it's that way. They need Mike to show up with Vinny and get the bat. Well, okay. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. That's true. They'll start covering the chamber. Oh yeah. Show, <laughs> show Vinny. Yes. You're, you're going to cover, you're going to cover, right? You're going to cover. Oh, I'll cover you. You're covered. Don't worry about that. We got to forget about it. Can we actually do that? Can we say what prices are? Or does it vary? Like how do you, um, how much is a visit for, I'd say I went in there and I wanted to learn what it's like to be in the hyperbaric chamber. And I wanted one. Well, we, we have a special rate for people who just kind of want to try it out and they should. Um, there's a couple of conditions that are contraindicated for hyperbaric. Uh, some people get claustrophobic and they don't know it. So like, we're not going to prescribe a whole treatment plan if somebody doesn't even know what the experience is like. So we, people were interested. We have them come into the clinic. We show them the hyperbarics. They get inside, we zip them up. They make sure that they're actually comfortable with the process. Sometimes they're not. And people don't know they have hyper, they're, they're claustrophobic until they actually try it, which is not often. It's not common, but it happens. So I'm a little claustrophobic. Just you telling me you're going to zip me up in a bag. I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. I'm going to go like into a, a bag. bag. <laughs> but I saw your, bar, your your chamber and I said to myself, well, it kind of just looks like a, uh, a tanning bed. Yeah, it's like a blow up tent. Like a fort. It didn't look like it, it was blown. It looked like metal. I was on the other side, so I didn't go that close. So I'm going to do it. We're going to film it. We're going to put it up on Instagram. Everybody can see what it's like for me to <laughs> go in there and do that. I was going to do it when I went there the other day getting the acupuncture, but I figured, you know what? I'm a little nervous. I don't want anybody to see me. And what does he do? He takes a bunch of pictures of me with the needles in my toes. <laughs> Very embarrassing. But if I can help somebody, I'll go ahead and run the risk of taking that embarrassment and we'll show everybody how you can make yourself feel good in a lot of different ways. Take one for the team. It looked like a massage place, too, because you had these great big massage tables. Yeah. Everybody was nice that worked in the uh, the entrance way. It looked like you had four different rooms in there. Uh, seven. Seven. Yeah. Seven. So, yeah. And when I showed up, there was another so-called celebrity in there. I, I don't want to say that I am, but he was. And he was in the movie House Party, Bowlegged, right? Bowlegged Lou. Bowlegged Lou from the movie House Party was in there. And uh, he had some jokes on him, too. It's great. You guys yeah. are hysterical. He, uh, he actually, for some reason or other, put on an apron. And he lifted up the apron. And it was a big penis <laughs> swinging in the wind. And it made me wonder, what makes a guy go out and say, you know what? I think I'll bring an apron with a big penis attached to it wherever I go. Best practical jokester. And he is. He's always got practical And when jokes. I walked Love out, he guy. put a sticker on my shoulder yep. that said, uh, like, kick me. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So not only <laughs> was the get... last time somebody put a sticker on no, you and said, kick me. No, that hasn't since I'm a kid kid. <laughs> um, there's another product here that we got to talk about, too. Yeah. Oh, the Canavision. The Canavision. Yep. Cannabis. Now, I'm a pothead. I definitely smoke weed. I've been smoking weed my whole life. Uh, when it was illegal, then when it was legal, then you had to see a doctor and the doctor said it was okay. This is my pipe That's from the nice 80s. Pipe. Isn't that beautiful? Fantastic. Yes, this is from Germany. It's like metal it's a and porcelain. porcelain. And you, nice. you filled that up there, you smoked and your cash yeah. just went out the window. And now you just go anywhere and you can get it and it's all good. But this is something that I would like you to talk about because... Jim Cecchio gave this to me, the chiropractor, mm -hmm. and I'd like to start doing it, but I didn't do it yet. So what do I do? This is how you do it. So Cannavision is a CBD product. CBD. CBD. Is Another can acronym. Yeah. CBD. Cannabidiol. That's what CBD stands for. Say it together. Canna. Canna. Buy. Buy. Dial. Dial. Okay. Cannabidiol. Cannabidiol. So CBD is arguably one of the most potent anti-inflammatories that we know of now in plant medicine. So we're using it to help people with a lot of things, control inflammation, 
uh, recovery, pain, arthritis, um, sleep, anxiety, uh, a lot of health benefits. There I don't is, sleep right, for sure. That's going to help you sleep. All right. So now listen, everybody who has a sleeping problem, a lot of people, when you get in the late 40s, early 50s, maybe because I got too much on my mind, I'm always worried. Am I going to, you know, you know, what's going on in the world? So I go to bed at like eight o'clock sometimes and I get up at three o'clock in the morning. Between and one and three. It. Yes. Between one and three. It's the same. Most people yeah. get up between one and three. And sometimes I have to pee really bad. I wanted to talk to you about that too. About pee. So here it is. Now let's suppose and I got a sleeping problem like I do. What do I want to do with this? You want to take two dropper fulls. It's approximately 86 milligrams of CBD. That, that much? Dropper full, yep. Where does it go? Under, Under my tongue. tongue? Now, you usually hold it there for about 30 seconds. Under the tongue, sublingual is better absorption. It tastes nice and weedy, huh? It tastes like bong water. Yeah. All right, I swallowed it. So that's one. Now what? So you do two of those. Two. And uh, usually takes about 20 or 30 minutes. And your body just, it, it, it doesn't knock you out. It's not like an Ambien or it's not like smoking weed. CBD is not THC. CBD is the anti-inflammatory. THC is the stuff that gets you high. So, so there's no THC in there. There is. There's the legal limit is 0.03%. Now you tell me. Yeah, a little bit. I just took two big I'm droppers. taking over the show, guys, in about 30 six minutes. 30 minutes, I'm going to be higher than hell. I got a plane to catch. <laughs> I'll probably be missing. <laughs> you're going to sleep on that plane like a baby. I don't feel anything, but no. you're saying in 30 minutes, I'm going to feel nice yeah. and warm and cuddly. It's not like taking brownies or anything like that it's just it's a very mild sedation of your immune system it just takes uh, your nervous system it just takes you down a notch it's like having half a glass of wine where do we get this uh canavisioncbd.com is that at your place yep get it at my place or online at canavisioncbd.com say that again while i do this tv commercial canavisioncbd.com I've been taking CBD for a while, and I find it makes you relax. Yes, that's what we're talking about, Mr. Rena. Excellent. What do you do with it? Um, we just demonstrated it. I'll take the Xanax. <laughs> My mix, Stugats here. <laughs> mix it with Xanax. Well, this Smooth. is fantastic. Yeah. It's natural. You know, a lot of people get tired of taking meds, and they just, you know, you take that and have a glass of wine and say goodnight. You could take, you have a glass of wine with this? So what I like about that is I got some, you know, friends, patients who like to drink, but if, if you need like three or four drinks, people, some people drink and it sedates them. You only need like one, like a glass and a half of wine. If you take some of that, it amplifies the effects of the alcohol. So A, you don't have the hangover, B, you don't have the inflammation from, from drinking too much alcohol, and you actually have a healthy beneficial response. The CBD will counteract the inflammatory properties of alcohol, so you don't get a hangover. Oh, wow. Well, I really don't drink that much. My hangover would come from smoking marijuana. So I guess I'll have this hangover. and I'm going to smoke my weed. It, it balances out the THC too. So if you wake up a little groggy in the next morning, if you're, you know, pulling bong hits. Why well, don't do bong hits? Nobody does. Who does bong hits anymore? <laughs> Jim Checchio does bong hits. He's always high. Hi, Dr. Andy Rosenfarb. I'm from the Philippines. Oh, we got Hi. a call in from the Philippines. Where can I get... Hyaluronic acid supplements. You can get them online. You can get them on Amazon. See any any grocery store, any health food store, pharmacies have it. It's very very easy to get. Even in the Philippines. Even the Philippines. Should All right. Be. Go on his website. We can use some uh, some shout outs from the Philippines. Thank you so much for writing into the show. What time of night is it there? What time of day? Isn't that cool? Dakes. Santos. It's morning. It's got to be in the morning, I think. Philippines. We're 15, 16 hours ahead. Right. Well, now that we're talking about CBD oil and we're talking about smoking marijuana, we might as well talk about food. Oh. Because when you get high, you what eat? do you really want? You want, a munch. You want food. And one munch. of the best places to get that food, we all know, because every Tuesday night when we do the show at 8 o'clock, the famous Johnny Salami from Hero Kings of Nutley, New Jersey, happens to get his hand in on the show somewhere, yes. somehow. Thank now you, we're Johnny. Now we're talking. <laughs> Johnny Thank Salami. you, Johnny Salami. 
Hero Kings of Nutley, New Jersey. <laughs> All right, get your hand off the camera. I mean, <laughs> Hero Kings of Nutley, New Jersey always shows up. One of my favorite guys in the entire world, Johnny Salami, a proud sponsor of Live from My Mother's Basement. And now we're going to see a guy who's in great shape. You are absolutely in great shape. Me, I'm at least 25 pounds heavy. This pandemic has been rough on me. All I want to do is eat. I eat. Why are you laughing? Johnny Salami comes over every fucking day, and he brings me a sandwich called speed. Number Four. <laughs> look, look at everybody writing in Number, number four. four. He made it. He made it. He made it. Hero Kings. I'm making this they guy famous. Him. They love him. He doesn't exist. He's just a hand, a left hand. He's a left it's hand. Like a hamburger, it's the wrong he's like hand. a hamburger helper. Yeah. <laughs> so here we have some sandwiches from Johnny Salami's Hero Kings of Nutley, New Jersey, and of course this is the Number Four which is gabagool, pressed ham, salami, Swiss cheese, lettuce, tomato, and a little bit of mayonnaise and oil and vinegar. When I lost my eyesight like 12 years, we moved on. <laughs> we moved on. We're on the sandwiches now. And there's also the uh, the Godfather. Godfather. He's not here, but if, if Johnny Salami was here, he would explain what's in the Godfather. What's in the Godfather? Johnny, what's in the Godfather? <laughs> Hurry up. Prosciutto, mozzarella, and a little bit of yes. balsamic vinegar. So why don't you grab yourself a sandwich? Uh, now, would you, you, even, you even eat this? Because you're so healthy looking. You're uh, yeah. ripped. You're <laughs> shredded. How, one, how many hours do you spend in the gym? Like, do you go to every the gym day. a lot? Every day. Really? Yeah, every what morning. I have a gym in the basement. Oh, oh, wow. You got a gym in the basement. We got a gym in this basement. I see. There's the a gym in the basement. Yeah, we got the sand weights. The five is a two. Uh, we got the uh, the thirty pounders that are about maybe just six pounds. You keep talking. I'm Go ahead, you grab that. So good. <clears throat> the Godfather. He's got the Godfather. I got the number four. See that? Say it, everybody. Number four. Number four. Listen, if you're in the state of New Jersey, and even if you're not in the state of New Jersey, I always recommend that you call my friend Johnny Salami of Hero Kings of Nutley, New Jersey, and have some fun. It's very easy to do. I want you to call him. I want you to annoy him. Mm. I want you to piss him off. Call. The Hero Kings of Nutley, New Jersey. His cell phone number is 973-661-3095. Call Johnny Salami. Say, listen, I ate your fucking sandwiches. And then order the number four. Make sure you scream it just like that. Look at Dixie. Godfather is what I'm going to get. Godfather. Sweet baby Jesus. Godfather. Is that sounds good. delicious. Johnny Salami's a saint. <laughs> well, hey, Dixie. I think she's in Texas. I want you to call Johnny Salami. Here's his cell phone number. Call him up. 973-661-3095. Tell him, I want a number four, but I want you to bring it to my house. All right? Leave me alone, Mike. <laughs> All right. We're having a lot of fun down here in the basement. And uh, not only did we get this great sandwich down here tonight, but a special friend dropped by. And, and left at the door without coming in. One of the greatest sweets of all time. Now watch this. This is coming from my brand new friend, Mary Ann. Did I say it right? Where's my fucking notes? <laughs> ah, Mary Ann Axon. 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 And she's with a company that I'm going to be doing some work with called... Uh, virtual cons and they produce shows like the sopranos con and mob con now it's virtual cons so you can go on the internet and check it out she's also a gourmet pastry chef i'm going to say it like that because i don't know any other way to say it so if you would hear me this oh, beautiful man. thing you can't believe check that out show it to everybody put that on both cameras Look at that. i got a scissor here so that i can cut the ribbon because we're going right into this stuff cannoli cupcakes we got a Dickens. doctor on the show. I oh, that smells I so good. Holy shit. You smelling that? Damn. You get diabetes Wait a just second. smelling it. Yeah, my so cholesterol good. level just went through oh. the attic. We're cutting this off here. This is ridiculous. Hold that up there. Hold that up there. Show it. Show it. Look at this Check shit. Okay. The Future of Conventions by Virtual Cons. Marianne Axon, Director of Events. At virtual cons. Call her on her cell phone. This your cell phone? That wasn't his cell phone. I'm not nuts. 
<laughs> you, well, you want to go to the internet and look up www.virtualcons.com. Virtualcons.com. Now, look, there's um, um, spoiledels here, but they got more chocolate syrup on it than I've ever seen on a spoiledel. Here is a chocolate covered pretzel. My God. We are going to lose. We're going to get CBD so high. Oh my God. Look at this. Look at this. Is this a gorgeous or what? We are chowing down. And there's cannolis over here. Now, I have to do this because I don't really want the cannoli, but I want that cake in the middle. I guess I can't cupcake get Cupcake cannolis? Right. Cupcake Screw cannolis. It. Hold that there, get doctor. In there. I got it. Here we are with a doctor who does acupuncture who probably would recommend I don't do this. And I would say, screw you, doctor. Everything in moderation, including moderation. Everything in moderation. That's some oh, yes. Second cupcake. Oh, yeah, I'm going to make an ass of myself. <laughs> um, you can have whatever you want if you want to put that I'm over there. On that. So good. Yeah, we're getting in on this. Holy shit. That's pretty good. This is so damn good. My arteries just said, you know what? We'll be all right. Have more. This is the most delicious cupcake I've ever had. So what you do is you get high. This is what we learned on tonight's show. You get high. Then you drink a bottle of CBD oil. A bottle. whole bottle. The whole bottle. <laughs> then you eat these cupcakes. And then you go into a barometric, heated, lit chamber and fall asleep. An acupuncture knockout. Too. And I, just, yeah, just in what, case you got a little extra. I can't even host this show because I ain't putting this down. I feel like one of the little rascals. <laughs> Remember the little rascals? They didn't give a Four shit. Feet? Yeah. They just like, what is that? Eat it. That's so good. This cupcake is so moist. You don't need teeth. <laughs> you don't need teeth. You don't need teeth. That's soft. I gummed it. So good. I'm making everybody so angry right now. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Marianne. She's oh. not here. Oh. I think I'm going to take some of those home. Well, listen, <laughs> I can't even talk. It is For those of you who are just listening, guys. we're eating cupcakes. And cannolis. And sandwiches. Godfather. And the number four, right? It's the number four. And the number four. And you got your pipe over there just in case. Man, I need a cup of coffee. <laughs> a little espresso with Sambuca. I can't breathe right now. You have me laughing so hard. Are you all these people writing? That's what? Moist. That is moist. Mm. Moist yum. <laughs> ah. It's a little, little we're being, filled kind. We're being coached by the outside people oh that God. we need to say there's more moist oh. shit going on here. I just got a flood of blood I don't even know what that means. Brain just... That is the greatest cupcake I ever had. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, well, is thank that you great? For getting that in there, appreciate that. I don't do sweet set often. When I do, gotta do these. Gotta do it right. I very seldom get quiet, but that cupcake was so good. I have, I can't talk. You need a moment of silence. Yeah, it's yeah. so good. Look at everybody. Yeah. That's what they said. Stoner's dream. Oh yeah, they should mm -hmm. call that cupcake a stoner's dream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I just dreamt it. Yeah, we just created the name for it, right? Cupcakes. Yeah. I'm dreaming right now. I'm going to have another one. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't have to dream. Yes. They're right over there. There you go. Just like it. Look at this. Cannoli. How sick is this? Mm. You can't believe how much chocolate is on that pretzel. This is a cooking show. What are these things called again? The, the waffles? Shoyadel. Got it. We'll be right back after this commercial break. So moist. It's so moist. Oh, there's a crunching. <laughs> I 
chocolate is incredible. See, most talk shows would have went to a commercial break, you know, for like Mills. Not us. We just eat and make you guys wish you were here. Pitzels. What did I call it? So moist. Is it Pitzels? It's a Pitzels. What's it for you now? Hey, listen, we got to get going. Creamy. I want to thank Dr. Andy Rosenfarb for not only coming on the show, but being a proud sponsor of Mike Marino live on tour for the next solid year. We got a lot of great shit that we're going to be doing. And when my shows are over, we're going to sell CBD oil to everybody. For marijuana. For everybody. You guys are going to laugh like you know it. Pit cells. I can't stop eating. Shouldn't. Remember, you can watch the show live every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, except for tonight because we made a special entry because I have to go on tour tomorrow. If you're in Florida, I will be at Off the Hook Comedy Club in Naples, Florida, March 31st through April 4th. If you're in the Boca Raton area, I will be at the Boca Black Box, April 9, 10, and 11. If you want to come and see me when I come back to New Jersey, just go to MikeMarino.net. And I got plenty of shows that are going to be sponsored by this doctor sitting right over here. But once or more, uh, Dr. Andy, would you tell us where we could find you on the Internet? If you guys want to check us out on the Internet, you can go to AcupuncturHealth.net or AccuVisionAcupuncture.com. If you want to learn a little bit more about what I do and my style of treatment and my philosophy, uh, check us out on YouTube. I have my own YouTube page, Dr. Andy Rosenfarb on YouTube. We have a lot of videos, so you can check us out there. Definitely watch his YouTube channel, especially if you want to learn more and more about going into the chamber and if you want to get some acupuncture. Yes. I'm going to make a commitment to the doctor tonight. <clears throat> He's going to help me lose 20 pounds. He's going to help me with my vision. And I'm going to help brag about what he does because you guys are going to see the results in me when I come on the show. So what do you say? Maybe three months? Lean and mean. Lean and mean in three months. I'm Lean going to look mean. completely different. When we come back on the show th at, around that time, I'll be wearing his shirt, a medium. Is that a medium? Right. Yeah. I'm, wearing a, I'm wearing an extra fat. <laughs> XF. <laughs> so we got to get going. I want to thank my producer, Tatiana Blue Shell, for always making live from my mother's basement a successful show and helping us get on the uh, guests on the show and helping also make sure that they go through the uh, COVID 19 check so that we don't infect each other and get each other sick. We're not going to get sick because we're unhealthy. We're going to get sick because we eat number four and a lot of different pastries all at the same time. I'm Mike Marino. We got to get going. Remember, make America Italian again. My motto is, you don't know nothing, you don't see nothing, you don't say nothing. And how do I end every single one of my broadcasts by always saying the same thing? Mm -hmm. Don't take no shit from nobody. Good night. You guys can have some sandwiches and eat the rest of these cakes if you want. People are texting me. Hey folks, I hope you're enjoying watching my podcast live from my mother's basement. We're having a lot of fun and I'm going to have a lot of great guests on the show in the future. So if you like it, hit like. You could also leave a comment. You could subscribe to my YouTube channel and watch all the funny videos. And you could also listen to my podcast on your favorite podcast app like Spotify and iTunes.